Hi everyone, and welcome back to Sonic Unleashed. And, uh, yeah, we've only got one thing left to do here, so let's not waste any time and just get started with this. So, this game had a lot of DLC. There's, like, a different... I think there's, like, they had, um, like, DLC adventure maps, whatever, whatever they called it, for each continent. So each area has a... at least a few extra day and night stages that you can play and these are like notoriously difficult as I said at the end of the last session like if you want difficulty for a Sonic game this is where you're gonna get it because these test your reflexes these um assume you've already beaten the main game because you're allowed to basically play these whenever you want but as soon as you like buy them and like download them and all that but you really shouldn't play these before you've done everything else because, yeah, nice. These don't pull any punches, like, these are easily the hardest levels in the game, and if you thought the main game was hard, like, you're gonna have your work cut out for you here, and... I did say a few times in the, for the Werehog that to an extent, you can kind of get away with just, like, using the same few combos with, with the Werehog. Not entirely, but for the most part, you, you don't need to experiment too much, and you can get away with it. And, uh, like, it doesn't... Damn it, dude. I'm not gonna bother trying to get a good rank, because it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, the... You do need to actually... Be... A bit more careful of what you're doing with the Werehog, because, because... You know, sometimes you do want to do specific moves more than others. And they really... Yeah, they, they really test you here. Now, this is the first level, and like, it's already kind of ridiculous. <laughs> And this is the kind of hard mode that I enjoy, like, it, none of it feels, like, cheap, if you will, like, a lot of it is just level design that you just kind of need to react to, and considering how the main game was already, like, very reaction heavy, this feels like a logical conclusion to that, whereas, not, I, I know a lot of people would disagree, like, I know there's a good amount of people that don't like the DLC because of, because of how difficult it is, and this is definitely not going to be for everyone. The difficulty of, of this is just <laughs> leagues beyond the main game, so if you don't like this, I can understand, and it does get pretty ludicrous, like, this is some of the most insane level design you'll probably see in, like, any Sonic game, <laughs> in terms of di difficulty, I mean. And, uh, yeah, personally, I really like that. It's it's a nice challenge for, like, the veteran players that just want a bit more. And, like, it, it's... Uh, I feel like it serves as a good final challenge for the game. Because, like I said, you can play these whenever you want, but I feel like they are designed to be, like, for, like, players that have, like, actually finished the game, being, being Dark Guy and all that. And, um, I like to see it as this game's post-game, really. Like, I, I feel like it works really well as that. And it's a good amount of, like, extra content as well. Like, if you thought there was, like, if you thought there was already, like, a lot of stuff to do in this game, then this DLC basically doubles that. And while it's no, while you don't have any new areas of what have you, like, these are still, you're still going through Apatos, Begonia, Missouri. Shema and all this other stuff and it does have a lot of like act 1-2s in the sense in the sense that like this is like a, the same area as like act 1 Win Winmore Isle but it's just new level design um, so there's also that but you know that's totally fine I, I don't expect the DLC to have like full new continents and 
all that other stuff. And there's still a decent amount of new levels that have unique level design in these, like, countries and whatnot. So, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a good mix of level design that's like a remixed, like a remixed stage, and also level design that's just unique. So, I don't know how that's an S, but I'll live with that. Yeah, I, I do also really like the fact that there's the remixed stages because it's like, you're going through stages that you know know already, but it puts like twists on it that make it more difficult and it puts you on your toes more and it's like, it's basically like a hard mode ver version of the stage, similar to how SA2 Heroes and Shadow 106 did it, which I really like. This is like the last game that really does something like this, where, where there's like a hard mode version of a level. And I really like that. Like it puts a twist on the state on a stage you already know, and like I I love the fact that SA two started it. And this is like pretty much the logical like lo logical uh, ending point to that because yeah, the ones in SA two Shadow Heroes and all that like though the stages were more difficult and they added more obstacles and. Some levels were changed more than others, but <laughs> this game just goes completely like crazy and like just puts a bunch of spikes, more obstacles, like more difficult platforming and whatnot. And it's yeah, it's, I just really like this. It's a really good time. And yeah. Now obviously there's no medals in these stages because the deal it, it wouldn't make sense for the DLC to add more medals so you don't really have collectibles to find so you're pretty much the reason you'd want to play these is basically just to have like obviously outside of just playing the stages is to um, try and uh, try and get S ranks I, I guess because besides that there's no real reason to necessarily master these, so, yeah, okay, <laughs> and he also like changed some, some stuff up so some pathways are a little bit different, so you need to just be wary of what's going on, and also make the quick time events a bit more uh, demanding, but, uh, if you've if you've gone up to Eggman Land at this point, they shouldn't be too uh, difficult. Just be wary that, like, a lot of the time the the QTEs are gonna expect expect you to do a bit more than in the base game. But it shouldn't be too anything too crazy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. And there we go. Yeah, I, I really wish they'd bring back the hard mode stuff. Like, Colors didn't really have it. Un uh, Generations didn't have it. Like, it had all the side missions and whatnot. So I guess that's the stand-in for that. And then... The... Uh, yeah, Lost World. Well, Lost World 3DS had it. Uh, the Wii U one didn't. And it's like, the stages are already like ridiculously long on the 3DS game. Like, already. Like, just having hard mode versions on top of that is kind of ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, Forces obviously didn't have it because it's like, <laughs> that game is, like, yeah. <laughs> More of <laughs> Yeah, I'll talk more about forces late uh, later date, but good lord. Yeah, this is. Just, I don't know. I like this, and uh, it's probably going to be a decent amount of fail. Damn it! Oh, okay. 
Nope, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep going with that. You just need to like make sure you're looking ahead because it does require a lot of quick reflexes. I don't know how I timed that. Like that was like ridiculously. Okay, I'm trying to get the light speed dash up there. It's difficult to reach that. All right. Yeah, it might also be best to, uh, okay. Not... I don't know how you get- oh my god. <laughs> I probably should stop trying to do that, but it's so tempting to just try and get to the upper route. There we go. Whew. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, good lord, this is insane. Yeah, some treacherous platforming her. Guy. I'm convinced they put those uh, Eggman Springs there because because of how the boost works. Or like how the home attack works. Oh my god. It's like you want a home attack. Or not, you want to just air boost over but ah dude. Oh my god. Okay. Ugh. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And then... We'll upgrade some of this. Dude! And since I've done all the side missions and the hot, like... Level one hot dog missions. I can actually see whether or not I've done all the all the missions in an area now, which is very nice. Yeah, it gives us that sense of um, finality, I guess. <laughs> just so we know we've just done not everything. We we haven't done everything in the game, but we've done all the important stuff, and that's about all I really care to do in this. Like, this, this was never going to be a 100% playthrough, because otherwise, if we did that, we'd be here all day. Well, not all day, we'd be here, like, all year. <laughs> and, yeah, again, considering how long this has been going on for, I kind of want to be done with this <laughs> at some point. So, yeah, let's just try and get through these, and uh, we'll be done. So I really, I really like the uh, Werehog Knight DLC specifically because they do a lot more with the platforming and like I said earlier, they try and actually make the fighting a lot more dangerous and you want to actually pay attention to what you're doing a lot more if you want to like have a good chance of survival anyway because they send you like into like pretty big gauntlets that aren't really easy to defeat even if you're at, like, even if you are, like, a maxed Werehog. So, there's quite a bit more challenge going on here. And, like, yeah, the platforming and the level design, everything is just... Okay. I didn't think it was it was going to do that. I could be wrong, but I, I remember the DLC for the these night levels having level design that's just leagues beyond, like, that's just leagues better than what the main game does or the Wii version. Like, this is 
peak peak <laughs> werehog for me. Like there's a lot of creative level design. The the combat actually tests you. Like I feel like the main game should have done more of. And yeah. Like it's a bit of a shame that this is relegated to the DLC. Like I like I said in other parts, I, I do still like the Werehog, Werehog stages, and I feel like the the level design is pretty good for what it, what it is. But I feel like this is this DLC elevates it so much that I really wish that this was the standard that the main game had. Like obviously tone the difficulty down. Like you don't want this kind of difficulty for the main. <laughs> Damn it, for the main game that that would be ludicrous. But if it had this like level of quality, but just a lower difficulty, like, that would be amazing. It, it's fine. The fact that it's in the game at all is uh, still good enough. And again, it's not like I dislike the the main night stages. I made that very clear throughout this playthrough. But yeah. This jerk. <laughs> I like that. It's, it's, it's like a nice challenge that like they're putting a spin on a concept that you've seen throughout the game already. Like, you've seen the tightrope section kind of thing so many times by this point, but you've never had a enemy try to hit you while you're doing it. Well, at least not the same way as that. So yeah, so. Nice, nice little difficulty twist. Oh god. Yeah, the wizard guys just... And look at this, like... The, um... What was I say? Look, look what I was saying about, uh... Difficulty, like... These guys are kicking my ass. And, um... Remember... Considering, like, how... Like my, what is it? Uh, it's really hard to do proper commentary while you're trying to do this, and I'm dead. Nice. Yeah. So you want to take out the wizards first because they get those guys suck us. So yeah, if you had trouble doing. Um, the Shaman Knight extra, er like where you went went up to stairs and you fought a bunch of enemies. If you had difficulty with that, you're gonna, like, have a hell of, of a time doing this DLC. Yeah, because it is heavily in heavily um, advised that you max out your Werehog before doing this. And yeah, I, I said this in a previous session, but there's always going to be a reason to get more XP because it takes a long time to get like your maxed Werehog, and you're going to need it if you want to if you want to like tackle this DLC. Like obviously, when you do get your max XP and all that, you don't need to worry about it as much anymore. But it's going to take you a long time to do that, even if you do like eat a bunch of food and whatnot. As you see me do throughout the playthrough, like, I've, I've uh, bought like a bunch of chili dogs and other such food and whatnot to uh, try and get Sonic's XP up. And even then, like, I still have a long ways to go. So they, yeah, they uh, really want you to work for that. So yeah, it's best to, I would prioritize mainly strength, life and, co and the combo so you get all your combos. The shield can be useful and uh, having like a high, like a, a unleashed mode that goes on for longer can help a lot but I feel like those two should be more secondary. You should prioritize life strength and uh, combos first and foremost and then upgrade the, uh, the shield and um, unleashed bars as it feels necessary. Because, uh, yeah, shielding can be really helpful. Okay, screw this. <laughs> I 
Yeah, the wizards can be pretty annoying. And again, with the with the shielding trick, like you can shield, use your shield to cancel combos, and that's gonna be pretty handy. So, like you didn't, it was it was nice to have in the in the main game, but it wasn't particularly used. Like, well, not used, but like you didn't really have much of an incentive to do that other than just speeding the game up. Which, I guess is already a good enough excuse to, like, master that, but... What I'm trying to say is that, considering how difficult, like, how much more difficult the fights can be, being able to cancel out of combos and act at, like... Act out of things faster and all that, will... Gives you more of an edge to get away from, like, enemies and whatnot. So we'll just... Level up the shield, and now, yeah, <laughs> now they're all starting to get pretty demanding in terms of what they want from me. Alright. Okay, so this is one of those like gauntlets I was talking about. Like this stage is basically just that massive round room at the end of the of Act One, and you just have to fight hordes upon hordes of enemies, and <laughs> this can be pretty difficult. I re I remember like even at max level, I remember struggling on this. So we'll see how this goes, and. Yeah, it starts off with just this big guy with all these little crocodile dudes or whatever they are. And it's like, oh, this should be pretty easy. Yeah, I think it's also worth noting that I think this is, like, this level is just this one room. It's just a massive brawl. So you won't be seeing any other areas. Oh, dude. So it's just this one room and it's just like, oh, it's just these guys, this is going to be easy. Oh, this is going to be easy. And, um, I'm kind of taking too much damage here. Okay, I need to pay attention to my shield thing. Because like, when you don't have any of your shield thingamabobs, you have a harder time actually blocking attacks. Which is something I didn't know for the longest time. I didn't really know what those things above the Unleashed Bar actually meant. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I, I, I was going to say earlier, like... This... The fact that, like... We're such a high level now, and we're we're not doing that much damage to these guys. Like, yeah, that that should tell you that <laughs> this is meant. Th these stages are meant for like a max warthog. So I do like that. The the fact that the DLC makes these enemies so difficult makes it so even after you have a max warthog, you still have a good challenge that you can overcome, and. If the if the DLC wasn't there, you just have the main game, and uh, yeah, when you have a maxed Werehog, like no, <laughs> none of these enemies are gonna pose a threat to you whatsoever. So I do I do like the fact that this is a thing. And again, you don't if you aren't into this kind of thing, then the game isn't forcing you to do any of that. So I think it's a I I think this DLC is just really good all around. I got no complaints really. Uh, what am I doing? I don't want to grab all these rings. <laughs> They're making me, making me waste the, uh, life energy.
Okay, I wanna... Boom. Trying to scatter them a little bit. They also play around with like the different enemy types as well, so I like to Oh dude. Yeah, see what I mean by difficulty? Like they they do not like play around with these. I am gonna die. Alright, you know what? Please give me health. Oh yeah yeah. This is gonna get ugly. So yeah, if you thought this game was too easy, here you go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh dude. I don't know how to deal with these electric guys. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to pick up with a. Oh, that was close. Oof. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Got those guys. And there's no checkpoints here here either, so I need to be wary of that. Ooh. Okay. Okay, is that it? Oh god, of course. <laughs> of course not. And, well, okay, th this shouldn't be too bad. Just, let's just whirl on him. Yeah. Like, he has a lot more health than he usually does, but... Yeah, this shouldn't be too... Anything too bad by this point. Just try not to be too clumsy, because... If you... Don't have that much health left... And there's not enough... There's not... There aren't any more rings or what what have you. Um, yeah, you don't want to end up dying to this guy and having to restart the whole thing. Oh, dude. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Oh my god. You can pause, but you can pause buffer, but I don't tend to do that. I feel... 
And I, I, I don't really like doing stuff like that for the most part. Like some, if a game like does something that's like super ludicrous that it's almost impossible to beat it without w without like pause buffering, then yeah, sure, whatever. But for this game, I, I don't think you need to. Yes, try and get uh, strength back up. Actually, you know, you know what? Just for the hell of it, uh, since we're done with Abatos now, I'm gonna go to Sp Actually, no, Spaghetti. Um, Peckles and Shaman now. <laughs> Never mind. So. Okay, let's just go to Shamal real quick, because I did buy something, some souvenirs for, uh, for Pickle, and then we'll also use up the rest of our money for, that we have for Chili Dogs, because, yeah, we aren't going to really use rings for anything else at this point. So we'll just ignore all of this. Uh, where's the, yeah, I think this is like a shortcut. Yeah. This probably won't be anything, like, s special, but, hey. I, I bought a few things, so I thought I, I may as well just give them, give them to him. Because I'm not going to do anything else with them otherwise. And yeah, you can just go to Eggman Land again and just start that whole sequence if you want. I've never, I've never actually, like, gone and actually checked all these, like, things that, things that the professor, like, tells you about. Okay, so, moving on from, from that, we're going to Missouri Sages now. And, uh, god, I, this one I remember being, like, not too crazy, but some of the later ones in in this area, like I think the the new stages, <laughs> I remember being kind of ridiculous. So that so that will will be interesting. So so no jump here. Don't know where I'm going. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, this is. This is. Oh. No. <laughs> this is like the logical ex um, conclusion of how difficult the boost can be. Like. The. The boost is not gonna get. The boost gameplay is not going to get any more difficult for, like, from this point on. Like, colors, generations, <laughs> forces is, like, not even worth talking about in this regard. Like, they're all significantly easier than what this DLC provides, so... Yeah, this is... This is as difficult as the boost gameplay is going to get. So... And I feel like you can't really get any crazier than this, like... This is, like... 
pushing it to its limit. Like, if you go any crazier than this, then I feel like you're probably gonna end up going in, getting into Kaizo territory, and like, that's just, at that point, that's just anti-Sonic. Like, this is, like, as far as you can go with uh, making it, like, super difficult without going too, like, like, too far with it. Oh my god. And yeah, if you, if you consider the, oh, jeez. In terms of, like, harder, like, how hard a Sonic game is, or, like, where you rank Unleashed in terms of, like, hardest Sonic games. If you factor in the DLC, then, yeah, I, I think without a shadow of a doubt, this is, like, this is the hardest 3D Sonic game. Like, <laughs> I... I played pretty much all of them at this point, so yeah, just with the DLC in mind, there's nothing that can really top this in terms of difficulty. Like, if you want to argue the 2D games, then that's a that can be argued. Like, maybe you can rank Sonic 2 Game Gear above this. I'm not entirely sure on that because I haven't played that game in a long time, but yeah, that's also a really difficult Sonic game. But this is definitely up there, like, just, in terms of just difficulty overall, I'd say this is definitely, like, one of the hardest. Just 2D, 2D and 3D. Because I still get tripped out, like, um, even today, like, I've played these stages so much and even I get, like, messed up every now and then. Oh, good. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, sometimes the game just... <laughs> ...does a silly, but... ...you know. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to get into the crazy stuff. Yeah, Act 3 2. This is an interesting one because it is, it's based on the it's a, a remixed version of Act 3, but it has like an extra stipulation where you do need to get 300 rings. So it's also kind of bringing back like those old secondary missions you saw in Adventure and Heroes. And um, uh, that's it's kind of cool. It's interesting like mixing this with like a standard get to the goal uh, mission. I also I just need to go the right direction. Okay. Yeah, this is yeah, that's where you need to go to get to the goal ring. And um it's always active that you um can't finish the level without getting all the like getting enough rings, so yeah, we just fail you. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, there probably won't be much, like, clever commentary from me for, for these DLC, like, considering how difficult these tend to be, like, I'm gonna have to focus a lot, so, 
I'll say what I can about them, but I need my full concentration to beat these. Okay, so now we have enough ring, so we need to go back and find that section. It's right there. I like that weird looking spring. There we go. Nice. The gold ring is also like fairly hidden as well, like if you don't know to like go down to where that like line of rings are. Um like if you don't know where if you don't know to do that. You're probably going to be like just looping around the tree over and over and over again. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people do that. So. They probably could have made it a little bit more obvious that you need to like stomp there to get to like where you need to go. It probably would have been better better to lock it off until you have enough rings, because otherwise you probably just see it as like another area you could go. Okay, this is an interesting one because it's like a, primarily a vertical platforming area, and uh, <laughs> they this requires a lot of tight reflexes, as you can see. So I want to go down. Well, I I'm curious, actually. I'm gonna try something. It's also unique in the sense that, like, this is one of very few stages that starts as a 2D section, which is... Doesn't happen often in this game. Wait, what the heck? I'm just kind of experimenting here a little bit. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> You know, yeah, screw it. I'll just play it. I'll just play it normally. At least they, the courteous to give you a life right there. Oh god. <laughs> so I do this. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> Oh right, there's a time limit as well, I forgot about that. No, 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 no. I really... this makes... I really shouldn't be bothering with this. Man. Okay. Dude. <laughs> I'm just failing at this point. How do I get that? Oh my god. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of wasting time. <laughs> I don't know. I just... At this point, I'm just doing it out of um, the principle of the matter. Dude. Timing. No, I don't want to... Okay. There we go. I didn't need to do that whatsoever. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing here? Oh yeah, we like had to backtrack, or well, not backtrack, but like we had to make our way down here to deactivate some flame shooters and go up there. And this is like some tricky wall jump stuff you'd see in Eggman Land. There we go. Not a long stage, but it does uh, test your platforming skills. 
and your reaction times. And then the next stage gets crazy. <laughs> It's almost as like almost uh, the amount of a uh, regular accent of colors. Here we go. Okay, so we have a lot of these like chase sequences. Nothing to really say about these, it's just same usual song and, song and dance as the, these areas usually. Um, just more obstacles than they, they tend to be otherwise in these sections. And um, that's about that's about it for the these uh, robot chase sequences or whatever. Oh, jeez. And they all die. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're infinite, they infinitely respawn. I, I don't think you can, you can ever kill all of them. And then we get to the platforming section and... You want to be really careful of these because they require you to like react like crazy fast in these sections. Then you go to this. And then we get to this guy chasing us. And <laughs> this, yeah, this level also tanks the frame rate like crazy. It's like, this is basically if a jungle joyride day had like a baby. Because, <laughs> man, it's, I think it's even worse than that stage. Man, I really want to play a version of this game that has no frame rate bugs. And that guy just tanks that explosion. Okay. Yeah, the frame rate does suffer a lot in this stage. Yeah, like, look at this. Oh! I want to get up there. No. That works. God, this is like two frames a second. Yeah, okay, if you haven't played this game before, play this game on the Xbox Series X. <laughs> if you can. You'll have a much better, better time. Oh, dude. Ugh, I'm getting hit by everything. And that's all she wrote. And that's Missouri Day done. Somehow I go on ass. <laughs> sure.